So, Usman Dembele is set to join PSG, with reports having emerged as early as Sunday afternoon that he had agreed personal terms on a five-year deal with the Parisian outfit, and that Dembele had communicated to his teammates on Sunday afternoon or Sunday evening that he would be leaving Catalonia for Paris. Naturally, Twitter or X has been awash with exes from Barca fans calling Dembele a traitor or a rat or a snake or God knows what else. Being in and amongst all this tweeting and Xing and I'm just going to keep on calling it tweeting, K. Elon, I have been sitting there, you know, reading it all and asking myself the simple question of why exactly Dembele would choose to leave Barca now and not early on in the window. And I've also been wondering really, you know, why he'd leave Barca for what is an absolute dumpster fire of a club. And I say that with all due disrespect to PSG, but also just wondering, is this really betrayal by Dembele? Is he really a traitor, a rat, a snake, as people have branded him? Well, if you would also like to know the answers to these questions, then welcome, you're in the right place, and I hope that you can strap in and fix yourself a snack because this is going to be a bit of a long one because in order to fully understand where we're at right now with Dembele's transfer to PSG, we have to first look at what's gone on between Barca and Dembele's camp, starting with what happened between December of 2021 and January of 2022. So are you ready? Okay. So what happened exactly in December of 2021? Well, back then, Barcelona agreed to sign Ferran Torres from Manchester City, and while his transfer fee and payment plan for the 50 million of the transfer fee was already agreed, Barcelona's financial difficulties were such that they wouldn't be able to register Ferran Torres without first making significant adjustments to their salary structure. Now, as not only Barca fans, but also just generally the rest of the world would soon come to learn, Matteo Alemani had a plan, and his plan in this case was to renegotiate player salaries, and to that effect, he had been locked in discussions with players such as Usman Dembele and his agent Musa Sissoko, as well as, you know, other players like Clem Longley and his agents and, you know, everybody who was being overpaid at Barca, which is basically every player at Barca. Long story short though, Dembele and Sissoko refused all of Barca's contract offers that would result in Dembele's salary being lowered. Seeing that they wouldn't be able to negotiate a renewal, Alemani and Laporta decided to transfer list Usman Dembele and to just, you know, ask him to be on his way hoping to either recoup something from him or to just free up the wage budget by, you know, losing him. To their added frustration though, Dembele and Sissoko refused to accept to leave and the proceedings of the back and forth that would then come between Barcelona, and by that I mean Barcelona's recruitment staff and Usman Dembele's camp, would eventually lead to the moment that is arguably Dembele's rock bottom at Barca, even more so than his injury spells, as Joan Laporta threatened to exile the French winger, who at this point was now being booed and whistled rather routinely at Camp Nou. However, Ousmane Dembele had, I guess, what we could call an angel in his corner in the form of Xavi Hernandez, and with Xavi Hernandez's help and trust, Dembele would eventually keep playing for Barca the rest of the season and would go on to win back the trust of the fans and some of the top brass like Joan Laporta, though not Matteo Alemani. And there's a reason for that. You see, Alemani stayed looking at Dembele with, you know, that side eye, even though Dembele was now in the best form of his Barca career because both Dembele and Sissoko were still refusing to sign Barca's renewal offer knowing fully well that they were heading to free agency into the summer window of 2022. All this whilst, of course, it was being widely reported that Dembele and Soko had a pre-contract agreement with PSG who saw Ousmane Dembele as a potential replacement for a certain Kylian Mbappe who was himself about to become a free agent. Tell me that doesn't already sound familiar. 
Anywho, into the 2022 summer transfer window, where both Dembele and Mbappe's contracts run down, and it was widely expected that Mbappe would sign for Real Madrid and Dembele would then go to PSG. However, that's not what transpired. We all know the famous U-turn that Kylian Mbappe made, and with that surprising U-turn, opting to stay in Paris rather than go to Madrid, PSG's interest in Dembele would as a result just dissolve and basically go away. This left Dembele and Sissoko with no other real attractive options and definitely nothing that they could use in their bargaining with FC Barcelona to try and get more money. So as a result, Dembele ended up renewing with FC Barcelona who managed to at least give him a deal which would see Usman Dembele's salary stay the same but you know with some added conditions like bonuses and the likes and that deal ended up being a two-year contract that had a rather interesting if not weird release clause. You see unlike many other Barcelona players at that time who were renewing at least the players who Xavi valued and wanted to keep in his team a lot of them we would see them renew with a release clause that would be something like 1 billion euros or 500 million euros. Usman Dembele on the other hand once he renewed his release clause was only for 50 million and as we've come to learn now that 50 million would have actually been shared equally between the club and the player had somebody paid it. With all of that said, you know, with that foundation established, we can now segue to some more recent events as recent as June of 2023. What happened then is that Barcelona decided to open talks once again with Usman Dembele and his agent Sissoko for a contract extension and looking from the outside in, one could have been forgiven for thinking that for once, we would see a dramaless and easy negotiation between the two parties who had been at each other's necks only about a year and a bit earlier. In fact, it seemed like a renewal would be simply an academic affair as right around the time renewal talks commenced with Dembele, Dembele was himself quoted in an interview as having said that he was enjoying himself at Barca thanks largely to Xavi and that he felt he had grown in responsibility at the club and he wanted to win a Champions League with Barca, a team he claimed to love. In addition to all of that, we also heard reports that Dembele wanted to take up a more prominent leadership role and to be considered for the club captaincy, something he no doubt said strategically because three of Barca's four captains had now left the club. Anybody with a working brain would naturally question to say were all those words just lip service from Osman Dembele? Is there something that didn't go quite right? If so, where exactly did it all start to go wrong? Well, one half of the answer comes from Paris and that's because PSG and Mbappe once again found themselves in the middle of a bit of a will he, won't he crap storm. I won't go too deeply into the details of it here, but let's just say that Mbappe decided to inform PSG that he would not be renewing and that he will be joining Real Madrid on a free transfer in 2024. PSG of course didn't take too kindly to this and sent Mbappe basically into exile where I think to this day he still is and basically they're telling him to renew or else he's going to rot on a bench or else they're also going to sell him forcibly. I don't know which of those they're trying to do here but in their fury PSG have decided that they're done with Mbappe and as a result they opted to reboot their Mbappe replacement plan from 2022 by renewing their interest in Usman Dembele. The same Usman Dembele who had recently professed his love for Barca. The same Barca that wants PSG absolutely nowhere near any of its players and also the same Barca that holds the other half on the answer to the question of what went wrong. So. Coming into the start of Barcelona's 
preseason tour for the U.S., you know, the preparations when all that was happening, Barcelona announced their new captains. And to the surprise of, honestly, not many people, if anybody, Usman Dembele wasn't named amongst the four captains, despite the fact that he was the third most senior player in Barcelona's squad. Only Roberto and Testegen have at this point been part of Barcelona's first team setup longer than Usman Dembele. Curiously, not long after Dembele's snub, if we can call it that, from captaincy, we started to hear the PSG rumors gain more prominence and the contract negotiation talks that had been ongoing for the renewal suddenly stalled. This, I believe, is really where things started to go south in leading Dembele to looking to Paris and walking away from what is admittedly a more promising project at the camp now. So as far as what might have happened to steer Dembele towards the exit door, where does it may be? I think that Barcelona not giving him this bigger leadership role might have played into it. Not completely, but you know, at least in a significant manner. And this then leads me to some of my thoughts with what I had in regards to how people are out here talking about this being a betrayal by Dembele. And well, all right, Barcelona fans, this is where you're going to want to look away for a little bit, at least the ones who refuse to have any sort of reason. If you are a reasonable fan though, then you might want to just, you know, pay a bit of attention to what I'm about to say because I am about to play a devil's advocate kind of role here and put myself in Dembele's shoes, but I'll do it by using a more, you know, desk job kind of analogy here just to further humanize Dembele and to help us all, you know, identify with what's going on more. But also because ultimately for Dembele, Barca is just his 9 to 5 at the end of the day. Alright, so for just a minute, imagine you've been working at a company for 6 years of your professional career where you joined at a relatively young age and you had a bit of a, you know, topsy-turvy kind of start to life in the organization. This being your first big job, you know, you struggled to find yourself in an office environment that you arrived in with a lot of expectation on your shoulders. Further to that, the management structure above you was always changing with the majority of directors you had to work under being hugely unqualified for the job. This leads to, you know, you having a lot of struggles and your struggles get worse so much so that you begin to consider leaving and starting over at another establishment. And added into all of that, you have a lot of health issues which keep you from, you know, working at your optimal best or even just flat out reporting for work. But just when it seems to you that OHOP is lost, your company hires a new director. And this new director comes along restoring order in the organization and then goes on to instill belief that you could be one of the company's biggest assets. You buy into that and you find yourself thriving under his guidance to the point where you're taking on responsibilities that you previously shunned and shied away from. So now it so happens that a few spots open up in management after a handful of company stalwarts retire and you look around to see who would be best suited to get that promotion and you can only see two other guys with more experience than you. So obviously, egged on by your recent, you know, great performance and good vibes in the office and your director's words always encouraging you with regards to your performance, you, you apply for that promotion. And when finally it comes time to, you know, for them to announce all the people who have gotten that promotion, you find out that two of your juniors in the office, one who is just two years of experience in the office, they both got promoted ahead of you. How would that make you feel? 
would it be fair for people to say that you're a trader if you left to take a job somewhere else where a management position was being offered to you? Would it be enough for your new director to just keep saying that he wants to keep you and that he believes in you if it can be backed up with that promotion you wanted so badly? Well, switch new director with Chavi and promotion to management with being given a captain's role and that's basically Demela's current situation. I mean, like it or not, PSG are offering him not just more money but also more responsibility within their team and more of a leadership role within their team just like they did when they took another former Barcelona number 9, he who shall not be named. See, like him, I think that guy, yeah, if you call that guy, you know, if say he betrayed Barca, I could definitely see that a lot more than saying if Dembele betrayed Barca because I feel like what Dembele is doing in accepting the PSG offer is no different from Ilkay Gundogan accepting the offer Barcelona put on the table to him over the one Manchester City put on the table for him. And yes, Barcelona did offer Gundogan more money than Manchester City did. So is he a sellout as well? Is he just money hungry? It's these kind of seemingly minuscule things that we have to consider when we're rendering our opinions about some of the things that are going around with our players. Dembele leaving will get a huge weight lifted off of Barca's wage bill, some money to spend on recruitments for positions like right back. You know, people are now talking about Cancelo and even Bernardo Silva being more realistic targets now. As well as all of that, Barcelona also get the added benefit of no longer having to deal with Dembele's baggage. That of course comes in the form of injuries, you know, his agent, Musa Sissoko, and a, we could say, questionable big game track record. You know, we've all seen the threads upon threads of people complaining about Dembele's inconsistency, well, Barca won't have to deal with that anymore. And I mean, throw in the fact that last summer, when he was looking set for PSG, Barcelona already signed Dembele's replacement in Rafinha, and you have to ask, is it really a bad thing that Dembele is off to PSG? Honestly, it might be a good thing. And listen, I've always been a fan of Dembele's capabilities when fit and on his day. The problem is that those two things don't happen together very often, meaning that more often than not, Barca are forced to improvise and find solutions to make up for Dembele's absence or otherwise poor performance. So then, if Barca, and in particular Xavi, were to simply readjust how this team attacks, and move away from playing with a system that relies on having a right winger who is, you know, dribbly, a big old dribbling machine, to one that relies on a right back who can overlap effectively and a right winger who can invert expertly, then we might just end up seeing an improved version of Rafinha and a version of Barca that is a little less predictable offensively than they are currently. As for Dembele, only time will tell if he'll end up regretting his decision to leave, like he who shall not be named did, or if he will vindicate himself by actually succeeding in an environment at PSG that is more toxic than peak Bartomeu's Barca was. Whichever one of those things happens, we'll be here to witness it, but until then, Here's to hoping that this Dembele transfer won't drag and disturb the rest of Barcelona's transfer window. And here's to hoping that you have a good day. Thank you for tuning in and Forza Barca.